And over the next 12 months, every chancer in the country is going to try and jump on the 1916 bandwagon. The most unexpected people are going to tell you that they've been proud Irish Republicans all along. Blue shirts, revisionists, West Brits, Shawnees, Gombeans, the whole lot of them. They're all going to declare themselves inheritors of 1916. And we must remember that these closet Republicans who have just come out of the closet, these same people maintain partition and support British rule in Ireland. These same people surrendered our sovereignty to the EU and the Troika. The same people who voted to bail out the private banks. The same people who gave away our natural resources. The same people who are imposing austerity from Leinster House and Stormont. The same people who are trying to make us pay for our water again. The same people who have spent the last 99 years trying to put back in place the system that 1916 fought against. These people will now claim that they are the true inheritors of 1916. So the last 100 years have taught us that words and slogans are cheap. It's easy to wrap yourself in a tricolour and declare yourself a proud Republican. It's easy to say you want a country that cherishes all the children of the nation equally. Michael Collins did it, De Valera did it, Hohi did it, they've all done it and over the next 12 months they're going to keep on doing it. But action and inaction speak far louder than words. Connolly understood that removing the British crown from Ireland wasn't enough. He understood that it wasn't enough to change one flag for another. He understood that Irish freedom from British rail was useless unless we used that freedom and use that freedom to deliver a national, an economic, a social and a cultural revolution. And that remains as true today as it did a hundred years ago. So the next time someone tells you that they are a Republican and that they've always been a great supporter in 1916 and then they ask you to vote for them or support them in some other way, ask them a few questions about their radical politics. Ask them are they willing to take on the elite, not just throw slogans and rhetoric at them, actually take them on? Are they willing to take back our oil, our gas, our fisheries, our lead, our zinc and our other natural resources? Are they willing to put the developer and the speculator out of business once and for all? Are they willing to do what has to be done to put every single family in a home? Are they willing to outlaw private banking and money lenders? Are they willing to end the private ownership of the media? Are they willing to make the corporations pay a just and proper amount of tax? Are they willing to challenge imperialism? To challenge the British, EU and US interference in Ireland's affairs? Are they willing to do what needs to be done to establish a republic of the type envisaged in 16? Ask them those questions when they tell you you're a republican. And I let you judge the answers. And ask how those, you judge how those answers measure up against the politics of Connolly, the Citizen Army, and the Revolution of 1916. We have just 12 months to organise now. The Dublin government, the political parties, the trade unions, they're all already out announcing their plans for events to mark the centenary of 16. And that's good and it's welcome, at least they're doing that. But wouldn't it be something else if communities all across the 32 counties started organising their own community, their own commemorations, their own public meetings, erecting their own monuments and plaques, and organising their own community parties for 1916, our own community-based celebrations? Wouldn't that be a good thing to see? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Why are we waiting? And why are people waiting for governments or political parties to lead the way? Imagine if in every community, every village, every town and every city, all across our 32 counties, people took ownership in 1916 and took of the centenary in 1916 and organised their own events. What's stopping any of us from talking to our neighbours and our friends and organising a community-based event to mark the centenary? Big or small, it doesn't matter. Get out and organise it. Imagine the potential for change that could be unleashed if large numbers of people came to understand and then support the politics of revolution that were at the heart of the 1916 proclamation. And at the heart of that proclamation was the complete destruction of the old order and the creation of a new order that put the people 
at the heart of our society. The message at the heart of our socialist republicanism is a message of hope and possibility, of a democratic economy, of an equal society, where everyone can reach their full potential, of a country that can be built after the occupation ends and after capitalism has been defeated. Ours is a vision of hope. So why don't all of us here set ourselves a challenge? Over the next 12 months, we'll spread the message of the politics of 1916, of the possibilities of a democratic economy and a fair society. And we work with our family, our friends, our neighbours to spread those politics and organise centenary celebrations within our communities. That, my friends, will be a very fitting tribute to those who gave their lives that we might all be free. Grimagas.